just a small seed that's already starting to grow underground. Because at the end of the day, that seed is on its way up. Just like HaKadosh Buhu judges us, not based on where we're holding. They say in Hebrew, it's called Megama, the trend. The trend has to be moving up. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is the Prism of Torah podcast with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. This week, Pasha Stavarim, live it up. Shalom to everyone. In this week's parsha, Parsha's Dvorim, I would like to share with you an idea I saw brought down by the famous Mashgiach of Mir, Rabbi Rucham, in his Sefer Das Chochmo Musa. We'll try to add on to it a bit, and Emil Seshem will just end off with an idea that has to do with Tisha B'Av to help us prepare for this very important day. So as we know, the beginning of Parshas Dvarim talks about the Toichacha, the rebuke, Klape Bnei Soil, and one of the items that are spoken about is the, the Chet HaMiragli. So it says that Bnei Israel requested to have spies going to Eretz Yisrael, which to a certain degree on their level showed a lack of faith of HaKadosh Baruch because he said Eretz Yisrael is going to be great for you, and yet they wanted and they pushed and requested to send spies. So the Pasuk in our parsha already says, Perik Aleph Pasuk Kaf Gimel, that after we requested, Vaitav Beinai HaDavar, HaKadosh Baruch said, okay, I don't really want to send spies, but because you requested it, I will do so. So we agreed that they'll take one person, a representative of each Shevet, and they will be the spies from Israel. Rashi over here in our Parsha says, on Dibur HaMaschil Vaikach Mikem, so who are these people that Hashem sent from each tribe? They were the most important, the most righteous people. As he says, Mina Burim Shebachem, Mina Mesulatim Shebachem, which represents the idea of the most Meshubach, the highest level of people were sent. The Ramban says even more than that. He said the order in which the, the names of the Meraglim, the spies that were sent, were mentioned is in the order of importance. Now, if you look carefully, you see Yeshua was only mentioned number five. But rather we know Yeshua was Gadol Ador, he took over from Moshe Rabbeinu. So this is just to indicate to us what a high level these people, the Meraglim, reached. Despite the fact that on their level they sinned, before starting this whole, this whole request to send spies, they're on a very high level. Says Rabbi Rucham in Das Chochma Musar, it's very interesting. You see from here a very important concept. And the concept is that we have to analyze exactly towards where we're going. It's less important at any point in time where we are holding, on which level we're holding, but it's way more important to see where we're heading, what the projection is. And I'll explain myself. There's this concept called that a person which means in which a, whichever way a person wants to go, Hashem allows him to go in that way. And this concept goes both ways. Habali tama, a person that wants to become impure and do avir, as Hashem will allow him to do it. And also the contrary, a person that really wants to lead tahel, misayim be'yadu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu helps him become a pure person, do mitzvahs, get closer to Hashem. Of course, you've got to normalize what I'm saying here. This is what Rabbi Yucham himself says. But on this high level that the uh, Meraglim, these people are on very high level, but on their level, they wanted... As Chazal tell us, Habali Tama, they wanted to become a bit impure. You see that they were heading that way. Because they requested, they were part of the nation that requested to have Miraglim, to have spies. They could have just trusted the Kaddish Bochu. And yet they requested to have spies. And therefore, as Rashi explains us in the parsha of Miraglim, which is in Bamidbar and Parsha Shlach, Lecham Perik Yud Gimel Pasuk Beis, it says, Chayehem Shani Noten Lehem Akom Litot. They want, they want to have room to make a mistake, okay? That's what they're requesting. I'll give them room to make a mistake. And indeed, they made a mistake because they came back and we know they said, Lashon Hara Baris Soil. Everything that was misinterpreted by them. They weren't supposed to interpret the situation. They were just supposed to come back and tell Moshe Rabbeinu what they saw. But instead, they didn't do that. They misinterpreted. Why? Because they were already heading in that way. A very 
stark contrast to that is someone that at face value they were on a very very Tumadika level we all know the famous story when Bnei Israel wanted to conquer Yericho they sent spies to the Kedesha Rachav the, the prostitute Rachav and she allowed them to hide she hid them in her house and she helped them and she did everything so that Bnei Israel would win which obviously showed an unbelievable level of Emunah Nekadosh Baruch Hu. She, she treated them as if she knew it was, it was for sure, no doubt about it, they're going to win the war. And she was helping them. Why? Because she trusted in the Nisim she heard. That's what Chazal tells us. The Nisim she heard about Kriyas Yamsuf and the wars that Bnei Israel won thus far. So she realized that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world and she had blind faith. And she, she helped them and as a result, as a result, we know that Chazal tell us, specifically, it's the Sifri on Parashas Ba'al Lo that she ended up marrying Yeshua, and eight Nevim and eight Melachim came from her. Says Rabbi Yucham, this contrast shows us the importance of ensuring that we're always walking on our way up. Because the opposite is also very important to know. It's very dangerous. It's not enough, as we discussed last week, it's not enough just to stand still and do nothing because you'll end up going down. But today we're saying a different point. And that point is that a person is, to see the value of a person, he has to judge himself on base, based on where he's leading, where the, where the projection is going. A person has to always ensure he's going on his way up. You see that even... Rachav, that was on such a low level, but because she picked up herself and started moving up and getting closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, look what ended up happening, as opposed to the Miraglim, who were on such a high level. And even though when they fell, they were still on a way higher level than Rachav. There's no doubt about it. But still, because they were on the way down, they ended up sinning more and more. And that's what happens. And a person has to always ensure he's on his way up. Lema davar doime. You can have a big tree that's very important and it's on a high level, quote unquote, because it has many good fruits and it's gishmak and it's amazing. But you could see it's starting to, to dry out. So some people may say, wow, but still look at the fruits, this is very important. But what's more valuable than that because of the trajectory is just a small seed that's already starting to grow underground. Because at the end of the day, that seed it's on its way up and in a couple of years it's going to grow as a tree and it's going to have many fruits for long term and that's the way the Torah views things HaKadosh Baruch Hu views us not where we're holding but where our trajectory is just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu judges us not based on where we're holding but based on the ground we manage to cover over our life and a person always has to make sure they say in Hebrew it's called Megama, the trend. The trend has to be moving up. Like a graph, the slope has to be steep. And we have to ensure we're going up. Because Chas V'Shalom, the opposite, you see where it can lead. This is exactly how we have to weigh Aruchnius. Aruchnius, we have to always ensure we're growing. Every time it takes something small, another step, another step. But we have to show HaKadosh Baruch and ourselves, of course, that we're always on our way up. I have a friend that's a seminary teacher over here and he told me that it's, it's funny, you see two different types of people. One person comes from a very religious, stark background and you see that sometimes in Israel, Dafka, they, they, they go down. Do you see their slope is going down? For whatever reason it is, maybe they're exposed to other people that they haven't seen in the shtetl that they grew up in. On the other hand, you see other people that come from a very modern background, not even so religious, they come to the year in El Tisoel to learn, and they really mamish, they mamish grow. You see them growing spiritually. Now at one point in the middle of the year, they both look the same. The way they speak, the way they conduct themselves, everything. But at the end of the day, they're worlds apart. It's only a matter of time before you see that, that it's gonna be evident also that they're worlds apart. Why? It's the same idea we're talking we're talking about it's where a person is heading that is where what's important and it's of course not enough to have it in our hearts but we have to bring it into action that is what it's all about and that's what we have to focus and recalibrate during Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur where, where we're going to always 
be ensuring that we're on our way up. On our way up. And that's how we have to conduct ourselves and the family. We always have to be on the way up. That's what we're here for. We're here in this world to do a tikkun, to our neshama, and to ensure we're always growing, removing the mechitzas, the barriers between us and the Kodesh Buchu, and continuously growing closer to Hashem. Before we move on to what I promised, a small idea of how to connect to Tisha B'Av, which is coming up. I want to say a, a mashal, a story that I said in the past, to, to bring the idea, to try to bring the idea home again. The idea of, of ensuring you're, you're growing, you're on your way up. And I've said this story, I think, two times already, but I'll say it in the short version. Once there was a, a person living in a certain neighborhood, and he saw that this new neighbor was going to come to live right next to him. He saw how he was looking at the size of the garden and he heard him saying, this is perfect for us. So this new neighbor, we'll call him new neighbor, new neighbor comes to live next to the old neighbor and he sees him planting something in the ground and watering it. And the old neighbor thought to himself, oh, this is very interesting. I wonder what this is going to be. Every day he's watering it and watering it and watering it. After a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, nothing, nothing can be seen. A year, two years, nothing can be seen. At that point already, the old neighbor thought this new neighbor is a bit, as they say, cuckoo, something's not 100% with him. What is he doing? He's investing in something and this is... Okay, after several years, the old neighbor goes away to a trip to America and he asks his old neighbor, hey, he asks the new neighbor, please take care of my house if something happens, etc. Okay. After two weeks, only two weeks of being in America, he comes back home and as he's arriving with the taxi, he can't even recognize his street. It's totally shaded at that time of day. He, he remembered it to be totally sunny. And as he approaches his driveway, he sees there's a huge tree, five meters tall, coming out from, from exactly that spot of, his, of the new neighbor's garden. He sees the, the new neighbor outside smiling with a the smile from ear to ear and he asks what is this how does this happen so he explained to him that there's this certain bamboo Chinese bamboo tree that it takes it five years to grow it invests in growing the the roots underground and the second it breaks open to the light to the open air it can grow within two weeks five meters so in the past, I used this story to show that a person has to toil, toil, eventually the fruits will come. But we have to inv invest in toiling and working on our midois and working on, on learning Torah and eventually the fruits will come. But this time I'm trying to use this story to, to show us that it's all a matter of always growing and eventually we will get to the point we want to get, but that's not what's important. What's important is to make sure we're always on our way up. Yeltsom will be zoiche to, to conduct ourselves in such a manner and by that getting closer to Hashem. About Tisha B'Av, I just thought it was right to mention something about Tisha B'Av. I know many people have spoken to me about Tisha B'Av that it's a bit hard for them to connect to the base of Mikdash. It was such an ancient thing. So I'm just going to say my two cents over here. And that is, based on a, on a true, it's not a story, it's something that happened. Then I have another friend that told me about this and he said, he happens to be a bit colorblind, and he said that he saw this video, and I guess you can Google this because this is true, this person, I don't know his name, but he was able to invent special glasses that when colorblind people put these glasses on, they can see the world with colors, the way it really is, the way most people, most of us see. And and of course, people that are extremely colorblind, they don't see any colors. Everything's are shades of black and gray, etc. And what was very interesting to see in this video is that many people have the same, had the same reaction. And the reaction was, as they put the glasses on, they, they, they were in such amazement. They stood up and, and just out of a crazy burst of emotion, they started crying. They started crying. So, my friend wanted to tell me that you can use this as, a, as an amazing mashal that we don't even know what it is to have a world with the base of Mikdash. The base of Mikdash 
is a totally makes this world a totally different place because it upgrades the spirituality of the world as a whole, specifically for the Jewish people. It is then so much more evident that Kaddish Buhu runs the world. There's so many Mamare Chazal that show us that when the base of Mikdash was there, there were so many miracles for the for the Jewish people. When they went up to the base of Mikdash, there were angels that protected their homes, pretending that the and, and the Goim thought it was we were still at home. Hashem gives us a promise when we go to the base of Mikdash during the Shloshari Galim, no one's gonna do any harm to our houses, to, to any of our belongings. And we know all the miracles that the mission of Pirkei Avos says in, in, in the base of Mikdash itself. And we were, and, and the Goyim were scared of us. They realized that Hashem runs the world. The base of Mikdash is not just something that's spiritual. It's a lot more than that. The whole world was different. The whole Nekudas Pchira, the optical illusion, was a lot less. And then the Nekudas Pchira was a lot higher, which means everyone was on a higher level, even the Goyim. And especially the, the, the Yidins. There wasn't such a thing that people didn't believe. It was so obvious that Kaddish Buhu runs the world. So, okay, so what was the freedom of choice over there? It was different. But we have to yearn for that. We have to cry for the mere fact that we don't realize what the world is with these glasses. Yerat Sonu, that on this Tisha B'Av, V'Shoa Kaddish Buhu, how much we yearn to have the world back with Beis HaMikdash, which is a totally different world, and we're able to see through these glasses and see what the world is all about. And through that, Mirza Hashem, already this year, then Tisha B'Av, B'mirav Yameinu Mashiach will come and we'll be, we'll be able to experience it ourselves and through that get closer to Kodesh Bochol. Have a good Shabbos and a meaningful Tisha B'Av. This is the Prism of Torah podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review. You can visit our website where you can find the full archive of Torah, prismoftorah.com. You can email us, admin at prismaftara.com. Sponsorship is still available for this episode and all future episodes. Visit our website, prismaftara.com, produced by Ellie Podcast Productions. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipments.